Welcome to my Shalom Zone. My name is Sherry Dawn, and it's my great honor and privilege to have this grace encounter with you today. Uh, I want to talk about a subject that a lot of churches will not even acknowledge. <laughs> and that's okay, you know, the Lord will help, the Lord will help them get it. But um, we're living in times when these things are becoming more and more and more apparent and we cannot continue to ignore them and hope they'll go away because they're not. We are in a war and Jesus has done things to make it possible for us to stand our ground and enforce his victory at the cross. But our ignorance has cost us in so many, many, many ways. But thanks be to God for the power of His Holy Spirit and His Word and what the blood of Jesus accomplished for us. We're, we're making up for lost time by His grace, and I'm very, very grateful for that. Now, as you know, I've been talking for a couple of months now, maybe a little longer, about what it means to be a priest of the Lord and that God has ordained priests to do three things, to minister to Him, to bless in his name and to try every controversy and every stroke with their words. This follows under that last category. Maybe a mixture of the last two categories. I don't know. But anyway, um, I want to talk to you about the difference between vexed by unclean spirits and being possessed by unclean spirits. Okay? Joel chapter 1 and verse 13 calls priests the ministers of the altar. Now, why is that important? Because at the altar is the place of sacrifice. That's where the sin is atoned for. That's where the wrath of God is diverted. And that's where liberty is obtained for the victim. Okay? Under the Old Covenant, they used sheep and goats and cattle and doves and pigeons. And then with every one of those was offered grain, wine, and oil, which all of it was ultimately pointing to Jesus the perfect sacrifice, the perfect overpayment for all the sins of all humanity so that he could set at liberty them that were bound. Now under the new covenant today, he works through believers who've been made kings and priests by his blood. We become a point of contact through which his Holy Spirit can flow and minister to those around us. And all of our ministry to others and on behalf of others has to start with what Jesus did at the cross. Ignorance of that is going to cause us to get off over into error and it's going to drastically limit the good that he is able to do in the lives of these people much as he wants to do it because he's not going to violate his word. He's not going to violate the covenant. He's not going to change it to suit us. We are the ones that have to have our minds transformed so we can understand his kingdom covenant ways and get in agreement with what he has done and is wanting to do to rescue this generation. Jesus said in Matthew 16 and verse 19 that he gave us the keys of the kingdom. Whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth is loose in heaven. He reiterated that statement in Matthew 18, 18, just before he started talking about the connection between uh, loosing and forgiving. So all of that's connected, and it would do you good to read Matthew 18 and Matthew 16, 19. Just read it and let it talk to you. He told Isaiah in chapter 58 and verse 6 that the fast he chose was to loose the bands of wickedness to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke. That hasn't changed. That's still his purpose. That's still his ministry. He is anointed to preach the gospel to the poor, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to open the blinded eye, blind eyes, to set at liberty them that are bruised. I mean, that's what he does. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, but he sent his spirit to dwell in us, to direct us, to carry on the work in the earth because there are still people who are bound and still who are hurting. He did not make us kings and priests so we could strut around in robes and crowns and crow about how lucky he is to have us in his kingdom. That's not how it works. 
He made us kings and priests because there is work that needs to be done in this earth. There are still unclean spirits loose on this planet who are vexing people. And yes, the, the enemy has been judged. Satan himself has been judged. He's on his way out. He's being cast out right now. All his little minions are being dealt with too. But we're learning from the Lord how to deal with them in a more permanent way than we have in times past. And if we're not open to learn that, we're going to keep suffering things that we should not suffer, things that Jesus has already redeemed us from simply because our ignorance is giving them an opening. Well, I, for one, am tired of having them a toehold, much less a stronghold. So I want to learn, I want to grow and do the things that the Lord has called us to do. So now I'm going to share with you the difference between being vexed and being possessed and what we're going to deal with in this particular little teaching is how to deal with people that are vexed, whether it's yourself or someone else. Because as I've said so many times in the past, this is not a power struggle. We're not in a power struggle with the devil. It's a lie, truth struggle. And every time you get hold of greater revelation of truth, his lie loses its hold. And he cannot function in the light where truth is. Now in Luke chapter 6, verses 17 through 19, uh, speaking of Jesus, said, He came down with them and stood in the plain in the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases this is one of the reasons I encourage you listen to these broadcasts there's life in the word you're being healed as you listen if you just receive that they came to hear and be healed of their diseases and they that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed. So please notice that dealing with being vexed by unclean spirits is a matter of healing. And it's already been paid for by the stripes of Jesus. The whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue out of him and healed them all. Glory to God. Oh, he's so good. Acts chapter 5, that what Jesus was doing was before the cross. And so many people want to jump up and say, but yeah, that was Jesus. Well, let me show you something that happened after he went back and was seated at the right hand of the Father and is now officiating as our highest priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. We are underling priests under him. Let's see some of his underling priests doing the same thing. Acts chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. Believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes, both of men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. Glory to God. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. If he wanted the vexed people healed under Jesus' ministry before the cross, we see the example of the vexed people being healed after the cross. Then here in 2021, he still wants people that are vexed with unclean spirits to be healed. Now, vexed comes from the Greek word achleho, and it means to mob, to harass to vex. Now that may not say a whole lot to you, but listen to what harass means. Harass means to trouble by repeated attacks. And number two, it means to distress with cares, misfortunes, etc. It means to disturb, to worry, to torment. Well, your radars ought to be going beep, 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 beep right about there. Because I know you know at least one person that's having those issues. Please let me stress again. Vexation is not demon possession. That is a totally different animal. Okay? To be possessed uses a different word for it in the scriptures. It's from the Greek word dahimanim zamahim. 
which will be the daemon is where we get demon, but it means to be literally exercised or controlled by a demon to be possessed with. So to be vexed is it's just coming against you, affecting your circumstances and affecting your mind. To be possessed means it's controlling you. A lot of times people that are are demon possessed whenever they've had the, you know, the unclean spirit has showed up, showed out, they're not even aware of what's going on sometimes. So we're not talking about possession right now. We're talking about being vexed by unclean spirits. Now, let me give you an example of possession from the scriptures. Matthew chapter 8. I'm going to start reading at verse 14. When Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. He touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto them. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. Daemon Idzamahi. Possessed, not vexed. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed them all. So it still comes under a category of healing. But he just cast the spirits out with his word, okay? That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Esaias the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our weaknesses. Going down to about verse 28, when he was come to the other side of the country of the Gergesenes, there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. They were possessed. The thing was controlling their actions. It gave them supernatural strength, and it terrified the people in the, in the community round about there. Behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? And there was a good way off from them a herd of many swine feeding. So the devils besought him, saying, If you cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, Go. And when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine. And behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the waters. And they that kept them fled and went their ways into the city and told everything what was befallen to the possessed of devils. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus. And when they saw him, <laughs> they besought him that he would depart out of their coasts. That is so tragic. God doing amazing, wonderful things because it freaks people out and it's out of the norm and, you know, cost them some of their living at that point because the pigs was how they were making their living and feeding themselves. So instead of embracing the miraculous, they invited him to leave. And I'm not going to get sidetracked on that. Please let me stress. Whether you're being vexed by demons or possessed by demons, ignoring them does not make them go away. Living in denial. Oh, I just don't believe that kind of stuff happens nowadays. That does not stop the attacks. This war is real. And the scripture is very plain in telling us to put on the armor of God because we wrestle against principalities and powers. Well, those are things that you cannot see. So you've got to know how to apply weapons that you cannot see to deal with an enemy you cannot see to enforce the victory that Jesus has already won for us. The weapons of redemption are the only weapons that work against unclean spirits. That brings us back to the altar of the cross. We overcame the dragon by the blood of the lamb, by the word of our testimony. And we love not our lives unto the death. Now, please let me stress. If you find yourself in a position that you're being vexed by the enemy, if you're vexed by horrible dreams, if you're if you have if your eyes are just open and people that have, have done drugs, this happens a lot, your eyes are open to see things in the spirit realm, even when you're wide awake and, and you just and it's just horrible, it's gory, it's scary. And there will be these manifestations and stuff. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're possessed. It just means that the enemy has found an opening and he's trying his best to vex and harass you and torment you. There is no condemnation to you for that. Jesus came. He was and is anointed to proclaim liberty to the captives. So we're not going to we're not going to play the condemnation game. He's already declared there is no condemnation to you in Christ Jesus. And and if you're a priest of the Lord, if you are a believer, you've been washed in the blood, and this is going to become 
part of what you do in the very near future, you're going to have to make a decision right now before you're confronted with some of these issues that I'm about to read off. We don't get to pick and choose who we think is worthy of being helped as far as being vexed by unclean spirits is concerned. Because if you're all about, and it's a wonderful thing to have a sense of justice and to be against wrongdoing. But some of the people that have done the things wrong were victims themselves earlier on. So we don't get to pick and choose. We extend grace and the healing deliverance that Jesus provided to whomever, whether they're the victim or whether the one that has done the victimizing. They're just human vessels. It's the unclean spirits we're called to deal with. We're the priests. We're not the judges of these human beings. God is the judge. We're here to minister his grace to get these people free so they can think. Okay? No condemnation. I don't care what they're guilty of. No condemnation. Number two, if there are repeated attacks of worry, distress, misfortune, torment, fear, etc., Please know that these are from the enemy of your soul. This is not God trying to teach you something. <sighs> know also that God has already made the way for you to be free. And number three, no matter how the door was opened that invited the little critters to come around vex, you got to know Jesus is the key that will shut the door. He has that key of David, Revelation chapter 3, verse 7. As priests, we have to believe this and exercise it for ourselves and be prepared to exercise it for others because they never quit trying. But there's a difference in having the occasional assault aimed at you because the devil's got his knickers in a twist and in being continually vexed and harassed because there's been an opening okay if the holy spirit leads you and the wisdom of god leads you and directs you to a specific open deal with that but for the most part don't waste your time trying to find out the roots and the sources and the cause and all that what i'm going to share with you is going to, it's like a blanket coverage it's going to deal with things and you're going to start seeing immediate results by applying these things having said that i will say this you do need to be aware that there are some general categories of door openers. And because these things are so prevalent in our society right now, you're just going to know, you know, that this is the is behind a lot of the reasons that these doors have been opened and these people are being vexed by unclean spirits. And Jesus has already taken care of it. Jesus has already paid for it. You don't have to get all mad and upset and, and, you know, want to just jump up on a soapbox and all that kind of stuff. No, your job as a priest of the Lord is to minister the things of the altar. The things of the altar is where the sacrifice was made. When these people are needing help, they don't need a sermon. They need deliverance. Door openers. It's drug use. And... I'm going to say this, and I know it's going to make some of you mad. Can't help that. That's between you and the good Lord. But it doesn't matter whether it's over-the-counter drugs or out-in-the-alley drugs. If it alters your consciousness level in any way, and I'm talking about like, you know, whatever. If it makes you way up, or if it puts you down. <laughs> if it alters your consciousness level, you better believe that there are little unclean demons that are standing around waiting to take advantage of that. And that, again, is not to condemn you. They delight in profiting from your ignorance and from your pain. And they love to multiply it whenever they can. As I said earlier, this is a war. But they understand how it works a whole lot better than folks do because folks are limited to what they see and feel and hear in the natural. It takes getting hold of the blood of Jesus and wisdom from the Word of God to be able to deal with these things. And that's the reason he raises up people like me. Been there and done that. I, the things that I'm sharing with you today, I use in meetings. I use in my living room. I use on the telephone when people call me at 3 o'clock in the morning, whatever. And God honors this. So I know what I'm talking about. I'm not just blowing smoke. 
anything that alters your consciousness through drug use. And I don't care what kind of drug it is. I don't care how legal. <sighs> Simple it might be, okay? Because <laughs> people got all sorts of things, you know, if they want to justify you and not, not worried about that. The point is, we're just knowing these are, these are door openers because if it's going to alter your consciousness, the devil's going to try to take advantage of that. <sighs> and here's another one you don't hear church folks talk about except the land blast people. We're not talking about condemning them because they've been caught up in this. We're talking about getting them free because they've been caught up in this. And as a priest, that's what the Lord's wanting you to do. He's got enough people condemning them. He don't need any more people condemning them. He needs somebody to stand in the gap and get them free. Sexual abuse, misuse of any kind, and I'm talking incest, rape, pedophilia, bestiality, any of that stuff, the list just goes on and on and on. If it's outside the original design that God made it to be, whether the person is the victim or the person who has done the victimizing is the abuser, it, both of them become prey to vexing spirits. And if you struggle with that, you better hit your prayer closet until you get to where you're not struggling with that. Because there is this is so rampant in our nation that this is going to be just become par for the course. And speaking things out and applying the blood of Jesus to see people rescued and made free in this outpouring that we're stepping into right now. You gotta understand, Jesus wants them free. He died for them to be free. But these activities have opened doors and given demons permission to vex. And when these people come for help, they do not need to be um, condemned and made to feel guilty and just, you know, have all that heaped on their head. They're already feeling that way. They need the truth of the gospel. Jesus has already paid for this. And the Father has said that he would be merciful to our unrighteousness, our sins and iniquities. He would remember no more. This stuff is hanging on simply because permission was for, you know, given to them. So now we're going to revoke their license. We're not going to allow them to operate here anymore. And it's that simple. Keep it simple. Promiscuity. And I may in the future teach something about soul ties. I, you know, I don't know. I think I've touched on it a little bit in the past. But sex is not just a physical act. There is literally a joining of souls and spirits when that sexual union is made. And you have soul ties to every sexual partner that you have ever had. And if that partner happened to be involved in witchcraft or they were involved in some sort of perverted uh, sexual activities or whatever as part of ceremonies or what, doesn't matter. But when you joined yourself up to that person that way, you opened the door to invite yourself to be vexed by unclean spirits. Again, no condemnation, but it would be to your advantage to learn how to shut the door and apply the blood of Jesus to it, unless you just enjoy being tormented and anxious and uh, being full of self-hatred and all that kind of stuff. All of this comes about because of things like this. And it's not limited to that, but this I'm just talking broad categories. These are areas that need healing. And I stress again, the scripture said he, he healed those that were vexed with unclean spirits. When church folks bought the lie that healing passed away with the apostles, they gave great opportunity to the enemy to start working in homes and in communities and left people to feel like there was absolutely no hope to ever get free because much as psychology and counseling can help in certain areas with this, they can't get to the root. you got to get to the root with the blood of Jesus because this is a spiritual thing. Even though there are physical activities involved that open the door, this is a spiritual thing and it must be dealt with by the Spirit of the Lord, by the Word of God, by the blood of Jesus. 
Another one that's a biggie is unforgiveness. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11 tells us to forgive lest Satan get an advantage of us. Forgiving is one of the ways that we learn to loose ourselves and to loose others. Read Matthew chapter 18 again. We cannot afford to forget that one of the advantages that the enemy gets is torment. Because Matthew 18, 34 says they'll be delivered to the tormentors till the debt's paid. Well, if you don't receive Jesus as the full payment of your debt, if you don't take your stand in his blood and what his blood has done, and you still hanging on to that unforgiveness, you're going to be tormented. Now, before the cross, we had to forgive in order to be forgiven. After the cross, we forgive because we have been forgiven. We are equipped by the Holy Spirit to forgive. And your feelings got nothing to do with it. It's an act of your will. And I know what I'm talking about there too because I've had situations come up in my life that I had to, I went through seasons that it took me months to get past something that someone had done to me. And every day I was declaring, I forgive. I choose to forgive. I choose to forgive. I'm not going to live under this. And, and the Lord liberated me from that, but it was a battle. But it had nothing to do with how I felt. And it's got nothing to do with how you feel. Forgiving is an act of our will. Because Jesus has already forgiven them. God has forgiven them for Jesus' sake. Who are we to say, no, I'm going to hold this sin against you and thereby keep you chained to it? No, I will not be guilty of that. And I pray you will make a decision to not be guilty of that. A lot of the... A lot of the tragedies that are happening in our nation right now... And I'm just going to say this and be bold and, you know... Let it fall where it may. <laughs> he that has ears to hear, let him hear. But the scripture is very plain in John chapter 20 that whosoever sins we remit, they're remitted. And whosoever sins we retain, they're retained. A lot of the junk that has grown to monster size in this nation right now has been because the church would not actively choose to remit the sins of the people. She chose instead to hold them up on a poster board for everybody to see and to criticize and condemn the people that were caught up in it instead of proclaiming the truth. Jesus already paid for you to be free from this. There is a deception. The Bible talks about the deceitfulness of sin. And that living in the moment, you know, indulging in the little thrill, enjoying the sensuality just for the sake of the sensuality, the deception that that has no repercussions, that's a lie. There are repercussions. Yes, God loves you. Yes, God forgives you. But that doesn't change the fact that the enemy was invited to harass, and he never turns down that invitation. He has to be deliberately backed out of the situation and blocked by the blood of Jesus. So what do we do? We stand in the redemption truths and we use the blood of Jesus to call a halt to it, to arrest their activities. That's what kings and priests do. And if you don't believe that the blood of Jesus and the Spirit of God and the Word of God have empowered you to do that and that the name of Jesus works effectively for you, just turn me off and go, you know, watch TV. But if you do believe, if you do believe the things that I've been sharing with you about what God is raising us up to do as a kingdom of priests in this earth right now, then listen to this and start practicing this because I'm telling you, dear friend, you are going to be called on to do this. Psalm 72, 14, Jesus has redeemed these souls, their minds, their wills, their emotions from deceit and violence. We've all been deceived in some point. We've all had violence committed against our minds, our wills, and emotions, some more so than others. And whether it's the victim or the abuser, the same blood was paid to redeem them and deliver them from that torment. And everybody needs to have the opportunity to have a safe place where they can come and say, I messed up so bad. I want to be free. Is there any hope for me? And you better be ready to tell them yes, unequivocally yes, because of what Jesus did. There's hope for you. 
Psalm 107 verse 2, Jesus has redeemed us from the hand of the enemy and the scripture says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. This is not a begging God to do something situation. This is an acknowledging what Jesus has already done and putting the devil on the run situation. Get familiar with these truths. Practice praying them for your family, for your friends and your neighbors in private. This is part of releasing blessing on them. If you're praying over them, Lord, their souls have been redeemed from deceit and violence. Whatever is vexing and harassing them and causing these series of unfortunate events and all this stuff, Lord, I, I cancel that in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over them. You're blessing those people when you do that for them. You're operating as a king and a priest when you do that for them. Then, when the opportunity arises and they come to you and call for help, you will be comfortable with ministering this new covenant grace to do much more than what the little vexing demons have been trying to do against them. But you got to get comfortable with it. Practice. Practice it. Get familiar with these. Then the Holy Spirit will bring to your mind whatever you need to do to deal with it face to face. All right, I'm just going to give you a blanket um, declaration to kind of help you learn how you need to address these kinds of things. And then as you practice this and as you listen to the Holy Spirit and as you study for yourself, He will help you refine it so that it's something that you're comfortable with in your personality type. Okay? But you need to know the basics. Just understand the basics. And then however He uses you, that's between you and Him. And it'll get the job done just because you're being obedient to what He's told you to do. But we've got to understand these things are bondages and we've been called to loose the bondages. And it's not because of our power or our strength or our great intelligence. It's because of what Jesus did at the cross. So if you want to decree with me, you may. If not, I'm just going to go ahead and read it out and give you this pattern. Let's just say you're praying for somebody face to face. Because this soul is redeemed from deceit and violence by Jesus' blood. Because this person is already redeemed from the hand of the enemy by Jesus' blood. I command every vexing spirit sent to torment this person to leave now. In Jesus' name, I declare what God has cleansed is clean. And devil, you have no legal right to them. They are forgiven for Jesus' sake and by his blood you're done here. And that's pretty much how simple it is. <laughs> you just got to be convinced that Jesus' blood is enough. Let me bless you. The Lord bless you and break every chain that has kept you bound away from new covenant truths. The Lord revive you and raise you up. The Lord cause you to flourish in His presence. The Lord bless you with greater sensitivity to His Holy Spirit that you may walk boldly as a king and a priest in this time. Let us pray. Father, I'm grateful to you that you've made provision for us in things that people don't like to talk about. They don't like to acknowledge don't like to admit <laughs> but you knew we needed the help you knew we were going to do stupid things you knew because of sin in our nature we were going to get involved in stuff that we deeply regretted later and then we're so ashamed of that we could we could just hardly stand to be among people because of that shame but you sent Jesus to not only pay for the penalty to pay for the act itself to bear the punishment for it, but to also bear the shame. And Lord, I'm so thankful for that. And I, I cry out to you now on behalf of this people, this nation, this generation across the world, 
that these areas that I've talked about today have opened doors for vexing by unclean spirits. I cry out to you on their behalf because I believe in the finished work of Jesus. I believe that those souls have already been redeemed from deceit and violence. I believe that they've been redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And they've been redeemed from that shame that goes with it too. So I pray for opening the eyes of the understanding, Lord. I'm asking for revelation by the Spirit. Those that you're awakening to the truth that they're a king and a priest by the blood of Jesus. Quicken them to these truths. Quicken their understanding, Lord. Quicken them to the ways of the kingdom. Create a hunger and a thirst to know your ways and a delight to do your will, Lord. To be willing and obedient in this time as you cause the kingdoms of this world to become the kingdoms of our Lord. And the best way in the world to get rid of enemies is to make them brothers and sisters in Christ. Help your people let go of their grudges and their bitterness and their unforgiveness and the self-righteousness that has caused us to point fingers at these individuals instead of extending the grace of God with the power and understanding to get them free. Thank you for teaching us, Father. We receive revelation by your Spirit, and we just bless you, Lord, and we decree all glory and all dominion be unto you, for you are worthy. You are worthy. Amen. All right, dear friend, I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day, and I will talk to you later.